Creating a Data Management Plan. This short presentation accompanies the document and example plan in this section of the Data Management Support Pack. We will consider overarching policies for data management and the detailed procedures. The aim of the Data Management Plan is to help you produce high quality data from your research, leading to results that are robust and reliable. By considering the data management tasks needed from the start of the project, you can ensure you have the necessary resources available. In your project plans, you must allow enough time for team members to carry out the tasks assigned to them. Consider the skills available in your team. Do you need more staff or do you need training for existing staff? What about equipment? This could be network storage devices for shared storage and backups or you might need handheld devices for collecting data. Be sure to allocate sufficient financial resources to data management. Do you have a line in your project budget for data management? In planning for data management, we consider two levels. At the project level, we refer to a data management policy. This policy sets out the main principles and agreements. For example, you might have a general agreement that all data generated by the project will be put into the public domain within two years of collection. The principal investigator would be the person responsible for making sure there is a project data management policy. At the project activity level, we consider the data management plan. This should detail the uh, procedures needed to carry out the policy. For example, the plan would detail how we're going to archive the data. The data will be archived using Dataverse, for example, and the archive will include a data quality report, a metadata document, the original questionnaires, etc. The plan would generally be drawn up and implemented by the data manager or whoever has been given overall responsibility for data management. One of the first questions a PI should address is, do I need a data manager? The choice is basically between having a specialist data manager who takes responsibility for all data management tasks and allocating these responsibilities to scientists within the team. This is a debatable point and the decision depends on the size and complexity of the study and the skills of the scientists. We would recommend the inclusion of a data manager in most projects. From our experience we have found that scientists have too much other work to do and without a dedicated data manager the necessary tasks are at best rushed and often skipped altogether. We'll mention here some of the headings for overarching principles and agreements. We'll start with data ownership, which is often a contentious issue. Thus, it's important to draw up agreements from the outset to avoid problems later. Data ownership is covered in more detail in a separate guide. Data sharing and access is linked to data ownership in many ways. Team members must have access to the data they need for their work and we would recommend using shared data and document storages, storage facilities. However, you do need to consider confidentiality, so it might be that data access occurs in a staged manner, with more team members being given access with time. Data ownership and sharing agreements can help avoid problems, such as a researcher disappearing with the only copy of the data. If the research involves collecting data on individuals, the researcher would generally need to obtain ethical approval or establish the code by which the project will work. Respondents must be fully informed of the purpose of the study and personal data must remain confidential. If any copyrighted data or tools are used, then permission must be sought from the copyright holder. For example, in one project a particular copyrighted tool was used and we were given permission to use it and the resulting data on condition that no changes were made to the tool. However, one country team did make changes and permission was subsequently withdrawn and we had to discard the data from that country. At this level, there is likely to be a broad statement saying something like all data generated by the project will be put into the public domain within two years. Quality standards and security covers aspects such as data checking and correction and regular backups. At this level, we might say, for instance, all project data will be subject to a quality assurance process and regular backups will be taken throughout the project. At the activity level, you should add the detail and here we'll go through a few pointers on the sort of things you should be including in your plan. 
for data collection, what capture methods will you be using? Will this be a survey or experiment? Describe the methods to be used. What technology will you be using? For example, paper questionnaires, mobile devices, etc. Briefly describe the data you intend to collect. For example, we'll be collecting data on 20 households in each of seven villages. Are you likely to be using any secondary data? If so, how will you source this data? Who owns it? When it comes to computerizing your data, think how you're going to enter it. What software will you be using? Will you have a customized data entry system? If recording directly onto handheld devices, what mechanisms do you have to ensure data quality? For example, two researchers will be present during data collection for validation purposes. Have your data entry staff been trained? Are you using double data entry? How do you intend to make sure your data is of high quality? Detail the checks you intend to carry out. For example, 12-year-olds cannot be grandparents. Harvest date cannot be before planting date. Describe the structure of the data. In particular, how many levels of data you are expecting and what they are. For example, household level, individual level. How many cases are expected at each level? How will you link data at the different levels? And what formats are to be used for storing the data? Will you be using a data and document storage facility? If yes, then describe the system to be used. We describe data and document stores in more detail in documents and videos in a separate section of this pack. Describe your backup procedure. How often will you take backups and who is responsible for making sure they are done? Where will they be stored? For example, locally on external hard drives or in a cloud storage. Do you have a consent form for respondents? This should be included in your archive. Do you need ethical approval and where is this being sought? What mechanisms do you have for ensuring confidentiality of personal data? Have all team members been made aware of and agreed to the terms of the project data ownership agreement? Are you using any copyrighted materials and if so, have you sought permission to use them? Detail any legal restrictions that might impact on how the data are used. We mentioned earlier the case where a country team made wording changes to a data collection instrument which meant we were not able to use the data from that country. The decision on whether or not to archive would generally be taken at the project level, but the decision on where to archive might be taken at the activity level. Where do you intend to archive your data? Will there be any access restrictions on the archive? Please see the separate section on archiving for more information on this topic. If you don't already have the required skills within the team, then New staff will need to be brought on board or existing staff will need to be trained. Regardless of the team composition, you will often need to train enumerators and data entry staff. So detail how you intend to carry out the necessary training and who will be responsible for this. So to summarise, what we are suggesting is a project policy to define principles and agreements. Think of this as what you intend to do. We then have activity plans detailing the intended procedures. This can be thought of as how you plan to do it. Then towards the end of the project or activity, it's a good idea to produce a data management report. This would detail what you actually did, what worked and what didn't work.